is connected to Parnassah. Torah is connected to Parnassah. There was a couple of times throughout history where Am Yisrael was very rich, but not rich in a sense where they were millionaires only. Rich in a sense where they had everything they wanted without working at all. When was it? When they learned Torah nonstop. In the desert, all they did is learn Torah. Second time was with King Chizkiyahu. King Chizkiyahu made a uh, decree. He put the sword down and he said, please. He put the sword down and he said, everyone must learn Torah from now on. Whoever doesn't learn Torah, I'm going to use the sword on him. I'm going to kill him. So it got to a point where even the six-year-old little babies all knew the entire Mishnah by heart. Little babies knew the entire Mishnah by heart. Today, adults don't know half the Mishnah by heart. They little babies knew the Mishnah by heart. So, Moshe Rabbeinu is telling them, he gave you man. He gave you Torah. If you learn Torah, Hashem is going to give you Parnassah. You don't learn Torah, whatever Parnassah you get is going to be very difficult. There's plenty of people that make a lot of money, but it's hard money. Meaning, it's tough for them to earn it. They work really, really hard. They work overtime. The job is hard. It's hot. It's cold. Customers are complaining. Customers don't want to pay. The expenses keep going higher. The, the uh, income is going higher, but the expenses go higher. I remember when I was in the business world, we were making on a bad month two, three hundred thousand a month. On a bad month. Bad month. Horrible. I barely came to work two hundred thousand a month. But somehow, at the end of the month, I was at zero. Still had money in the bank, but whatever I made last month, gone. Somehow, whatever I made that month, I had no bracha. Expenses. Yeah, but last month the expenses were 100000 How did they double in one month? Oh, this happened and that happened, this happened and that happened, 200000 this month. Okay, fine, no problem. You work the next month, okay, this month I made 400000 You think at the very least I should have 200000 left. Makes sense, no? Last month, expenses were 200000 This month, it should be, at the worst case in earth, 200000 Somehow, money is gone. Shem, mamash, when you don't have bracha from Shemaim, you don't have, there's no power in the world that can stop it. Only Hashem can stop it. Only Hashem can decide you have bracha or not bracha in the money. So people spend an obnoxious amount of time chasing money, not realizing that your money is connected to your Torah. You learn Torah, you'll have just enough money, whatever you need. You don't learn Torah, it doesn't matter how much you work. It doesn't matter how much you work. No bracha in your money. No bracha, I mean, no bracha in your money. And I'm not telling you for somebody who didn't have money. Everybody knows I have plenty of money in my life. So, somebody tells you a lot of things about money, but they never had money. It's worthless. Somebody had plenty of money. I'm telling you, you don't have no bracha in your money, take it, katub. It's written, signature. So, now you have a situation here where Moshe Rabbeinu says, look, he gave you mana. He gave you Egypt, was begging for you to leave. He gave you a cloud you could walk on. You didn't have to get tired. He gave you a cloud to bathe you. You didn't have to take a shower. You didn't have to change your clothes for 40 years, brand new, like you bought it from the store, with the tag on it and everything. Everything brand new. You wanted light? You didn't even have to pay electric bill. There's a pillar of fire. There's a pillar of fire, mate. You want to read the book? Anytime at night, you can read it. You don't want to read the book, go to sleep. The pillar of fire doesn't affect you. Everything you wanted, he gave you. He said, go to the blessed land, the land of milk and honey. And he didn't have emunah. All of a sudden, you lost your emunah. He gave us everything, but this, no, no, it's too much. What is this like? What is this like? It is like us. This is exactly like us. We say, okay, you know what? We're going to do tshuva. What's tshuva? Oh, I'm going to start going to Beknesset. Okay, everybody goes to Beknesset. Okay, go to Beknesset. Oh, what do you do Beknesset? Oh, as a guy, you late feeling in the morning. Nets, 8 o'clock, whatever you like, you do feeling, you pray. Okay, what else you do? Mincha, okay, I pray Mincha. Arvi, pray Arvi, usually it's connected, so it's easy. What else you do? Go to Shil Torah, okay, I go to Shil Torah. How many times a week? Once? Okay, I'll go once. If you could go five times, you should go five times. But if you have once, I'll go once. Fine, I'll go with Shil Torah. Get married? Okay, get married. Have kids? Okay, have kids. Where do we lose our emotion? Everything else we're doing. We're doing tshuva. Tzadikim, right? Moshe Rabbeinu says, you, you, right now, you and me, everybody, you have no emunah. 
Why you have no emunah? What do I do? I, why? Do tshuva. Keep Shabbat, the lachot. You have no emunah. Why? Why you work so much? Why are you not sure if Hashem is going to give you panasa next month? Why? Why did you work overtime last month? Why did you work overtime two months ago? Why are you still working overtime next week? You're already planning next week to work overtime. How do you know you're going to need overtime next week? Maybe you're going to have enough panasa. You already planned to work overtime next week. You already planned that you're not going to have. You planned like you look, you decide what you're going to have. What's the answer? The answer is, panasa is connected to your Torah. You learn Torah, Hashem will provide panasa. You don't learn Torah, Hashem's not going to provide panasa. But the problem here is, is that when you don't have the trust that He's going to do His end of the deal, He doesn't do it. He says, oh, you didn't trust me? Okay, go ahead, you do it then. If you don't trust him to do his end of the deal, that usually means you're not going to do your end of the deal. You're not going to learn Torah. You're going to say, no, listen, I don't have time to learn Torah. I got to go work. If Hashem wanted me to have money, you'd already send it to me. You want Hashem to work on your time, on your schedule. So Moshe Rabbeinu says, he gave you man. He gave you Mitzrayim. He gave you this, he gave you this. But when it came to the land, when it came to money, he said, no, no, no. He ran out of money. He spent all of his money. He doesn't have any money. Hashem spent all of his money. He create, used all the money to build the world. Then he had to create it. So an un unnecessary, unexpected expense had to come up. He had to build the world again. Construction companies, titles, city searched. He had to create the world twice. He didn't only create it once. He ran out of money. So everybody thinks God is broke. He says, you have no emunah. You have emunah for him to give you eyes? Yes. You have emunah for him to give you a wife? Yes. You have emunah for him to give you air to breathe? Yes. But money? Nothing. Nobody has emunah that Hashem has money. It's the most ridiculous thing in the world. Mama's ridiculous. Everything else you trust Hashem. You ask a guy, are you going to get married? Yeah, of course. How do you know you're going to find a wife? Bezat Hashem. You're going to have kids? Yeah, of course I'm going to have kids. How do you know you're going to have kids? Bezat Hashem. You're going to get a job? Yeah, of course I'm going to get a job. How do you know you're going to get a job? Bezat Hashem. You're going to go do this? You're going to do that? Yeah, of course, Bezat Hashem. You're going to go shield Torah? Ah, bli neder, bli neder, bli neder. I don't want to promise. Why? I got to work. What do you mean? This God that you trusted to give you a wife, to give you kids, to give you avodah, to give you this, to give you this, you're not, you don't trust Him to give you money to so go learn Torah? Everything else you trust Him to give you wife, to give you kids, to give you eyes, to give you ears, to give you food, to give you... Everything else you trust Him except to give you money. Money he doesn't have. He broke. You need to help him. You need to go get a second job. Moshe Rabbeinu is saying you have no emunah. Why you don't have emunah? Well, it's one thing you didn't listen. One thing. You don't have emunah in one thing. It's poison for the rest of it. If I say, what's the Hasbro Shalom? You have Sprite bottle. Beautiful Sprite bottle. You bought it for two, three, four, five dollars Whatever it costs today. <laughs> nice, right? But I said, listen. The Sprite, perfect. Came from Coca-Cola. Wonderful. But I put just a little bit of poison in it. A little bit. Not that much. A little bit of poison. Who's drinking first? No one's drinking. Why? Because you know it's poison. That's what Moshe Rabbeinu is saying. Moshe Rabbeinu is saying. He's not saying. Yo, Rishayim. Yo, no. He's saying you had no emunah. Why you don't have emunah? Because that emunah that's fragmented, that's broken, that's not a reliable emunah in one place destroys everything else. Destroys everything else, makes everything else stinky. Why? It starts with no emunah with money. The next thing you know, there's no emunah with Shabbat. The next thing you know, there's no emunah in Rabbanim. The next thing you know, there's no emunah in Zivu. There's no emunah here, there's no emunah there. The next thing you know, you become Christian. That's it, we're finished. You become a different religion.